Next to the last Tuesday. Look at my hair. Oh, it's windy outside. Ooh. Next to the last Tuesday, guys. Next to the last Tuesday. So we're almost there. But here's what the thing. Normally, when it gets this close to end of school, we're really having to press you guys to make sure that you stay focused, and that you don't quit, uh, quit on us or quit on yourselves, and uh, that you, oh, grasses are crooked for some reason. Hmm. Is that better? No. Hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> Um, we're usually having to push you guys and make you stay focused, and I can't even stay focused. Um, and it's going to be doubly hard right now because you're at home, and we're not able to keep our thumb on you. And I've noticed that some of you are kind of letting it slip and not wanting to do, you know, you get behind on the assignments because you goof off for a day and because we're not there to watch you. And uh, I know your parents are around, but some, you know, some of them are working, and they, don't, they think you're working. Okay, so double down. Double down. We only have a few more days. Stay focused. All these grades still count. And a lot of you worked very hard this last quarter and your grades look very good. But man, they can really just, okay? Um, if you don't stay focused and don't, um, you know, just, it's almost done. So just stick it out to the very end. Don't quit. And then it'll feel really good when it's over because you know you did your best. Okay? Now, uh, I don't really have any other announcements other than Zoom classes. I'm going to say this again, and I want you to understand this applies not just for my class. This applies for any Zoom class you attend. If a teacher schedules a Zoom class and you can attend, then you're required to attend. Does that make sense? If you can't attend, you need to let that teacher know. This, this is a rule for life, okay? And it goes for business meetings that, that, you, that happen online. It goes for college classes that are online. If you can't attend, you need to let your teacher know that you can't attend and why. Okay? Don't just start asking, well, I've already done my work, so I can't be. No, if the teacher schedules a Zoom class, come to class. Okay? Then if you're finished and y'all aren't doing anything, like in some of my classes where I don't actually teach during the class, but I'm just here to answer questions, if you're already finished, then you can ask permission to leave, and I'll let I'll let you leave. I'll double check, make sure you're caught up on everything, don't have corrections, and I'll let you go. I don't care. I mean, I like to see you, but I like for you to be there, but it's okay. Well, you know, I understand. But if, a te if any teacher at this school schedules a Zoom class, then you need to show up for that Zoom class, or you need to let them know that you're not going to be able to and why. Okay, you can tell them. The best way to tell them that is through Jupiter, because you know they're going to get it. Okay, you can tell them through, you know, if you're talking to them on Hangouts, you can let them know there. But the best way to let them know you're not going to be able to attend their class is through Jupiter. Okay. Now, uh, I know that there's a couple of, you know, that there's a couple of you that don't have very good internet connections. And, and sometimes it's spotty and sometimes you don't always know the very last second. If that happens, send, go down Jupiter. So I try to join, but I can't join. You let the communicate. Okay. Next, if you're in a Zoom class, you do not have permission to leave unless you ask if you can leave. Okay? If you're in a Zoom class, you don't just leave. Now, I know I made this speech about my classes yesterday, but then I heard that it was happening in some others. This goes for everybody, not just me. If you're in a Zoom meeting or you're in a conference call, this is for life. You don't just leave. You, you tell people you're leaving. If you're on a conference call, if you're on a bridge, if you're on whatever. Okay? Because it's just rude. It's just rude to walk out of a room where you're part of the meeting. You wouldn't do that in person. You shouldn't do it digitally. Now, what if you're on a Zoom call and it just drops? Your internet kicks you off or you have, or your computer dies or whatever. You know, you can't help that. So you just join, you just log back in. Okay? If you can't log back in, it's an internet problem, then you let the teacher know what happened. Even if it's an hour or two later before you can actually get on Jupiter and say, you know, sorry, I, I, you know, internet kicked me off. Did I miss anything? Is there anything I need to know? You know, communicate. It's your responsibility. You know, all right? So, we've been, you know, we're trying to be lenient. The teachers are learning how to use these technologies and you're learning how to use technologies. But now it's time to talk about some etiquette. All right? Okay. That out of the way. Let's open our Bibles back to John. Uh, no, John. We weren't in John. We were in Ephesians. Ephesians 4. And we're wrapping up uh, chapter 3 here. Cha 
I said four. Hmm. Ephesians chapter three was where we were yesterday. We're going to finish the chapter today. Okay, we're going to start in verse 20. There's 20 and 21 is all that's left, but there's some good stuff in there. Okay. Ephesians chapter three, verse 20. Not John and not chapter four. Well, are we all there? Okay, let's go. Now to him, that's capital H, that means Jesus. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. To him, capital H, Jesus, be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all the nations forever and ever. Amen. Now let's go back through that. Okay, that's a lot of, that's a lot of syllables. And Paul doesn't always talk the way we talk. He, he, he spoke a different language. Okay, he wrote this in Greek. And so sometimes in the effort to, to, to communicate what he was saying, he spoke very formally, especially when he was writing. And so it doesn't come across very conversational. Um, and sometimes reading some other versions of the Bible can help. I highly recommend that you stick with the majority text. You know why? Because all the verses are there. So a King James, a New King James, I like the New King James, just easier to read. But uh, a New King James, you know, 2000 or 2000 millennial, um, anything that uses the minority, uh, majority text. Most readily and easy one to find online or in a bookstore is the New King James, okay? Now, I highly recommend that's, that's what you stick with, but going online or looking on your phone and looking at a newer, updated version is good to get the gist of what they're talking about. Get the, get the kind of the idea or the message. It's more conversational. It's more in our uh, vernacular, so to speak. So there's nothing wrong with that. Go and look and see, you know, read the com, you know, read the, read a commentary on it or read just a newer version of the Bible. But be careful because if you notice verses are missing or phrases are missing, go back and check and check that out. Okay. Uh, now, so verse 20, let's just go through it. Uh, now to him, Jesus, who is able to do, now this is what Jesus is able to do exceedingly. What does that mean? To exceed. To, to do, um, to not just meet the goal, but to exceed the goal. Not just to meet our needs, but to exceed our needs. Okay? And not just exceedingly, but exceedingly abundantly. Now, what does abundantly mean? It's a little different than exceeding. Abundantly means in all ways. Okay? So if, let's say that uh, you're hungry and you go to uh, a food bank or, or, some, or somebody, or, you know, and you're hungry and you go and you say, I'm hungry, I need food. And they give you, and you say, well, how much food do you need to, to be full, you know, to, or to eat for the day? And, and, and you say, well, I, you know, I need 2,000 calories. And so they go and they get you some bread, and they give you four loaves of bread. And they say, there you go. Well, only, I think, bread is about, uh, I think two loaves of bread is about 2,000 calories. So if they give you four loaves of bread, that's 4,000 calories. So they exceeded your needs. But you got to eat bread the rest of the day. <laughs> what does abundantly mean? Abundantly means they don't give you just bread. They give you bread and meat and fruit and vegetables. And, you know, they give you all the things that you need nutritionally. They give it to you abundantly. Okay. So you get everything you need and you get everything you need exceeded. And look at the second part of this above all that we ask or think. Above all we ask or think. I need this, Lord. He is able to meet that need. Now, this is what he is able to do. He is able to meet that need past it and exceed it. And he's able to meet that need in complete abundance in every way that we need it. according to the power that works in us. Okay. Now, just because Jesus can meet all of our needs exceedingly and abundantly doesn't mean that's the best thing for us. If you've ever met a child, uh, six or seven years old, and they're used to always getting their way about everything, 
that child can be hard to be around. That's what we call being a spoiled brat. And it can be hard to be around that child who's maybe five or six. It's not his fault, not the kid's fault, it's the parent's fault for not instilling discipline, self-control, politeness. You know, I mean, if they're always used to getting one of the money, if they're the center of the universe for their parents, then they're going to interrupt you. They're going to talk while you're talking. They're going to want to tell you a story while you're trying to talk to another adult that doesn't really even matter. I mean, they, you know, they're like, what are you doing? I'm, I'm talking here and um, they don't understand. So it's not always good to give us as people everything, not that we, that, but I mean, just everything that we want, everything that we think we want. God knows best, just like sometimes your parents know best and they have reasons for saying no. I don't wanna go over to so-and-so's house. No, why not? I, I, why not? Well, because it's, because you need to spend time with the family. But, but there's nothing wrong going to that person's house. No, we like that person. But you've been you know, to two other places this week and it's time for you to stay home. And it's hard for us to understand that. Believe me, I was a teenager. I didn't get it. Like, you don't really like me anyway. Why don't you let me go over to these other people's house? Like, you know, <laughs> I was there. I understand. But I also know that from, after getting past that, that there were reasons for that. That they knew I acted differently the more times I was around different people than I really acted when I was left by myself or by, at home with my family. And, and so there, there were, they, they had reasons for saying no. And then there were times when I wanted something in particular, not just to be with somebody else, but maybe it was something, uh, a shirt or a particular style uh, or something like that or, or some kind of gadget that I wanted. Um, that they would say no to because they knew better. They knew that, I, you know, no, we don't want you to, to be focused on having these kinds of things. You need to focus on stuff that's more important. So, or we want you to work for it. And we want to teach you a lesson to get that thing that you need. So, you know, I'm just not going to give it to you even though I can afford to. I'm going to make you work for it. Okay? That's, that's where the parents work. Well, God is our ultimate parent and he knows ultimately what is best for us. And sometimes he doesn't give us what we want or what we ask for to, in, in, to instill in us things that are much more important than that thing that we think we want or need, or that person that we think we want to be around. So God has his reasons, but he has the power, he is able to meet and exceed all of our needs, even more than we can ask or even think. And he does. And that's the cool part. He does to his glory. He's trying to make us the best people we can be so that when people look at us, they see him. And that we can bring glory to him. Glory means to make him bigger. And, and that's what he's trying to do in us. And the cool thing about it is, is it's good for us. Because he made us. He's our creator. So he knows what's best for us. And so as we're bringing glory to him, it's actually improving our lives and making us better. We lack ourselves better the more that he works in us. And that's why it's such a beautiful and wonderful thing to be a Christian and to live and to let and to pray and to let him work through us. All right, so we keep that in mind. And uh, this is for uh, my, other, my last point here. This is the very last point. Is that this is Christ Jesus in the church. His glory in the church. Okay? And that's us. That's me and you. And we have, to, we have to remember that it doesn't matter what church you go to, that's part of the English language, it doesn't matter what building you go to or what church you belong to, or, uh, we are all, if we believe in Jesus Christ, we are the church, okay? And uh, we are brothers and sisters. And, and so that's a, that's a beautiful and wonderful thing we need to keep in mind, okay? All right, well, let's say a little prayer and we'll be done for, and then you can get back to your uh, Tuesday, right? Oh, it's Cinco de Mayo today, by the way. Yeah, have a chip. Oh, I don't have any. Lord, thank you for this day, and we just ask that you uh, bless and keep us, Father, and that you help us to realize just that how much you can meet and exceed our needs, that we don't have to worry about those things. We just need to trust you uh, to meet and exceed our needs. And uh, But uh, there's also reasons, and we need to... Uh, uh, bend to your will, Father, for the times when you tell us no, uh, or when you say no, not yet, or uh, that's not the that's not the plan right now. Whatever whatever the answer is that we don't like, 
We just pray, Father, that you give us understanding, and patience, and discernment to understand your will for our lives, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Happy Cinco de Mayo.